Howdy, my totally as always, Two Wheeler Gamers are back with you guessed it, another ranking video. Thanks for coming back to the channel. If you're new here, maybe stick around for a while. I got a fun ranking video for you today. Today we're gonna be talking about the Contra series. Yes, the long-standing running gun franchise by Konami that started all the way back in 1987 and is probably the most recognizable running gun series of them all. Contra has been around for quite a while, and today we're gonna be ranking all of the Contra games from worst to best, giving each one of them a little review, stacking them up against each other and seeing which ones are worth playing. People love these games for their fast-paced run-and-gun gameplay, interesting level design, fun weapons, and being incredibly challenging but rewarding. These games are not messing around. It does not get much more difficult than the Contra games, but it really does make it all the more rewarding when you're able to conquer a level, defeat a boss, or even beat a game. But we'll be talking about all of that soon enough. When it comes to ranking these games, we're going to rank them based off their quality, the level design, the Weapon selection, the difficulty, is it fun to come back to or is it just totally suck? That's what we're here to find out. And on top of this, I'm only going to be looking at one version of each game. A lot of these games have multiple versions and have been re-released several times over. I'm only looking at one version. Otherwise, the original Contra would be on here like five times. But yeah, we're going to be going from the original Contra all the way up to the latest release Contra Operation Galuga. And I want to give a shout out to Konami for hooking me up with the game. That is very much appreciated. But let's see how it stacks up against some of the classics. As always, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you're playing any Contra games down below or what you're favorite Contra game is. We got the super thanks and the Patreon. Any support is truly greatly appreciated and I hope you all enjoy the video. So with all of these Contra games, there is a good amount. Which do I think is actually the weakest of the series? Well, it's kind of a toss up between two games, but I'm going to say the worst Contra game is C, the Contra Adventure releasing for the PS1 in 1998. This game was developed by Appalooza Interactive, an American studio, and is actually a follow up to their prior game, Contra Legacy of War. This is one of the 3D Contra games. And you might go, wow, Contra in 3D? I thought all of the games were 2D. I'm not too familiar with Contra in 3D. There's a reason for that. Contra in 3D is generally regarded as like one of the very worst 2D to 3D transitions. Like they were just never able to properly move that awesome 2D gameplay into a 3D setting and this game, yeah, it absolutely shows if you play it for even more than 20 minutes. Now when it comes to this game setup, like all other Contra games, it's incredibly basic. It just sees a meteorite coming down to earth and aliens show up and it's up to the Contra force to go take them out. The premise is fine, the story has never been the focus of Contra, what's always been the focus is the gameplay and that's really where this game shits the bed. And we're not talking about just a little nugget here or anything, we're talking full on Hershey squirts in the bed, this gameplay, it is not good. This game actually has multiple perspectives depending on which level you're in. Some levels are in 2D where it's much more recognizable as Contra, but a majority of the levels, really a majority of this game is in 3D. Sometimes it's over the shoulder like the older Tomb Raiders or those older 3D Duke Nukem games, and sometimes it's overhead. Sometimes it's also right behind you and it's kind of like the original Contra. But it doesn't really matter what the perspective is because it all sucks. It doesn't control well, the controls are unintuitive, imprecise, and sloppy. Aiming and shooting does not feel nice in this game. Nothing feels nice in this game actually. On top of this, the level design isn't good. The enemy encounters are not well designed. This game just doesn't feel well designed in a few aspects, but the gameplay really just does not come together for an enjoyable experience. Like, I wanted to put this game down pretty quick, especially once we got to the 3D areas because I was like, oh, this sucks. This feels like ass and I'm not having any fun. Even the 2D segments suck also. The game really just doesn't have like anything good going for it. It feels like they failed to capture anything good from the older Contra games. It doesn't even have multiplayer. There's no co-op. It's a single player only game. On top of this, the presentation isn't very good. The game is just straight up ugly. The music is forgettable. And it's no wonder why people forgot Contra ever even had 3D games to begin with because they're like this. They suck and they're not worth playing. And that leads us to Contra Legacy of War, the other 3D Contra game releasing for the PS1 in 96. It was kind of a toss up between this and the previous game. Both of them aren't very good. But I mean, I guess I'd rather play this game over the other one. Maybe, I, I guess, yeah, at this moment, sure. At least the music's pretty good in this game, I'll give you that. When it comes to this game's story, it's pretty basic. It sees the hardcore Contra team setting out to defeat this evil dictator of a small country, and that's really it. Immediately, you'll notice that while the game is in 3D, it might not be the 3D you were thinking. The game, for the most part, is played from either a top-down or isometric perspective, and you'll immediately wonder, how is the shooting in this game? How does it control? And how does the game feel, like, overall? Well, I'll tell you the answer to all of those. 
bad. This game controls like shit. It's super stiff, but at the same time kind of sensitive. It's really imprecise, and I just never felt like I had a good grasp of the controls. Aiming and shooting in this game is just bad. Like, it's so awkward, and it's just so imprecise. It really feels like a chore to aim and shoot. Let me repeat that. It feels like a chore to aim and shoot in a Contra game. You know it's bad. The level design isn't very good. The enemy encounters and boss encounters are also not very good. You get a decent amount of weapons, but you're not going to want to use any of them other than the homing weapon. The homing weapon makes the shooting a little bit better. And that's because you don't have to do this thing called aiming. It makes the gameplay a little bit more tolerable. But I did not enjoy this gameplay. I really didn't enjoy like anything about this gameplay. And the presentation might actually be worse than C the Contra Adventure. When I said that these games were pretty neck and neck in quality, I really do mean that. They both suck and have very little to no redeeming qualities. Even the most die-hard of Contra fans should forget this game exists. Either game exists. Like, Konami really struggled in the 90s to bring a few of their series to 3D, and I don't think there's a better example than Contra. It just did not work. Neither game are worth your time, and I've spent enough time talking about these games. Let's move on. And so here we have Contra Rogue Corps, which came out in 2019. Now, this was the first Contra game in eight years, and people didn't exactly take too kind to this game. And after playing it even a few years later, it's pretty easy to see why. Rogue Corps is not a very good game. And while I would say it is a bit better than the PS1 games, that's really not saying much here. When it comes to this game's story and setup, it does actually have a little bit of a story, even cutscenes to it. It takes place after Contra 3 and sees Damn City. That's the city that gets destroyed in Contra. 3 being basically this post-apocalyptic environment where humans just totally lose their mind to become these fiends thanks to all the alien technology and so it's up to four former military mercs to come together and try to save humanity. The story, yeah, it exists and it's pretty stupid and just kind of forgettable. It's here and you probably won't remember it's here even two hours later. I don't really have much to say on that. When it comes to the gameplay, the game is actually pretty comparable to Neo Contra where there's a mixture of side-scrolling 2D levels, there's some third-person levels, some isometric levels, and even some top-down perspective levels. And it controls for the most part like a twin-stick shooter. I'll just say the controls here are better than the PS1 games, but they're really not great. It feels imprecise, relatively clunky, and it's just not all that intuitive. Again, aiming and shooting is supposed to be fun in a Contra game. Here, it still kind of feels like a chore. It's not awful, but I wouldn't say it's very good either. Like how you mess up a twin stick shooter's controls is kind of beyond me, but they've done it here. It just doesn't feel nice. Shooting, platforming, aiming, yeah, it could certainly be better. When it comes to what you're doing in this game, I mean, it's a Contra game. You're going to shoot basically everything that moves. It does go up to four player co-op, which is nice, but good luck getting anyone to actually play it with you, and you'll basically be blasting everything. Unfortunately, though, this game's gameplay really just just does not come together. Not only are the controls not very good, but the levels are ridiculously bland, boring, uninteresting, and it just feels really generic. The level design itself is quite unremarkable. There's not really any good set pieces here. There's plenty of boss fights, but I just didn't find any of them engaging. I didn't find the gameplay engaging at all. And while it puts up a decent challenge at times, I just didn't really care about what I was doing here. I was just like, oh, okay, I think I'm ready to play, you know, a better game. And I just couldn't bring myself to play much of this one. Like, this game just felt so generic and soulless. Even with, like, this upgrade system and a half-decent customization system, it just kind of hurt to play this one. The presentation is incredibly generic and budget, and you wouldn't even know this game came out in 2019. It doesn't look very good. And on top of that, there's a bunch of Konami DLC nonsense, and I can see why so many people did not like this game and were ready to let Contra just be dead. Like, as a longtime Contra fan, this game, it's pretty painful to look at, and while we are in better times, as this was not the latest Contra game, it doesn't change the fact that this game still sucks and is absolutely not worth playing, even for the most die-hard of Contra fans. Stay away. And so here we have Contra Force, which came out for the NES in 1992. So interestingly enough, this game originally was not going to be a Contra game, it was going to be a game known as Arkhound, but... But at some point, this game morphed into the next Contra game. It was going to actually be Contra 3, but after a delay, it caused it to be the fourth one. And then they just said, you know what, we're just going to call it Contra Force. 
And I think it's important to bring this up because if you're looking at all the Contra games on NES, this one sticks out like a sore thumb. Any of the recognizable characters or enemies from the previous couple games are not here. You get to choose between four different characters at the beginning, and it is cool that there are four different characters that are all different from each other, but none of them are the recognizable Contra characters. And while on paper this game plays very much like the other Contra games, you know, a 2D running gun shooter, it really doesn't feel or play that much like the other Contra games, and it's nowhere near as good. Sure, the game sees you shooting basically everything that moves from either a 2D perspective or a top-down perspective, but this just does not come together anywhere near as nice as the other older Contra games. You can actually choose your character whenever you want from the sub-menu, and they all are different from each other, including their weapon. And the weapons in this game, yeah, it's nothing like the Contra games of old. You don't just pick up a new weapon and start using it. It's much more like Gradius, complete with the power selection meter, and I don't really like this. I like how, you know, basically every other Contra game has done it where you just pick up the weapon and start using it, and the weapons in this game are nowhere near as good as the other Contra weapons. Where's my spreader? Seriously, this is one of the only Contra games without the spread gun. Are, are you serious? What kind of a game is this? Not a very good one, I'll tell you that. But the game having a lackluster weapon selection is not its only issue. The level design is just not very good. Maybe that's another issue that gets compounded thanks to the bad weapon selection, but I just didn't really have any fun going through these levels. They were really generic, basic, and are really some of the least memorable missions in the entire series. Could you explain to me one level from this game without cheating or looking at this footage? Probably not. I sure as hell couldn't, I won't lie to you. They just felt really by the numbers, cookie cutter, and kinda generic. And something else that doesn't make these these levels any better is the sprite flickering and the slowdown. Seriously, this game really slows down. It comes down to a crawl at times, and I'm just like, wow, I feel like I'm almost looking at a slideshow here, and the sprites are flickering out of control here. Don't get me wrong, some of the older Mega Man games had some sprite flickering, but it was never this bad. This is just ridiculous. And I feel like it also messes with the game's pacing, being nowhere near as tight as some of the other Contra games. It really wasn't a very enjoyable experience. It wasn't awful, and I'd rather play this over the previous few Contra games, but I still couldn't recommend this. Like, even if you love classic Contra, I still couldn't recommend this. The issue isn't necessarily that it's different from the other Contra games, oh, it's bad because it's different. No, it's different and bad. Like, the controls aren't as good, the weapons suck, the levels are uninteresting, it runs like ass, and at its very best, it still feels watered down from the other Contra games, and so I can't recommend this one. Okay, so here we finally have a game that doesn't suck. We have Operation C, releasing for the Game Boy in 91. This was the first portable Contra game, and the game is a sequel to Super C. It features very similar gameplay, graphics, music, and even level design from the original two Contra games on NES, but it all comes together for a decent, bite-sized run-and-gun experience. It sees our man Bill Riser busting into an enemy stronghold that's secretly storing alien weapons, and that goes about as well as you'd expect. When it comes to the gameplay, it actually really is that classic Contra running gun experience. Obviously, it's a lot more scaled down since it's on the Game Boy, but it actually does come together better than you would think. I mean, it is pretty simplistic gameplay at the end of the day. You just move to the right and shoot basically everything and try to dodge other projectiles. Two of the levels are from a top-down perspective, and... I'll just say the top-down levels are as good as they were in the other classic Contra games, which is just okay. But when it comes to the controls, they're decent enough, you just aim and shoot. I know, what a concept, it just works. And the level design, yeah, despite being bite-sized and rather simplistic and sometimes using level design from older Contra games, I'd say it's decent enough. I mean, this is a Game Boy game after all, I'm not expecting greatness or anything here. If it was even almost as good as the NES games, I'd be rather impressed. It's fine for what it is, it's nothing special, but it's not awful, I'll cut this game some slack and give it a pass when it comes to the level design. Something interesting of note was this this was the first Contra game to feature auto fire as the default feature, meaning that the machine gun power up is basically useless, and so they actually removed it along with the laser rifle. But this game has a new weapon, the homing gun, that fires bullets that chase after enemies. This would become a mainstay in other Contras. And you can even upgrade my favorite weapon, the spread gun, if you collect it twice. That's pretty cool. And so, all in all, when it comes to the gameplay, yeah, it's alright. It's aged actually pretty decently, and I'd rather play this over several, and I mean several other Game Boy games. I don't really like most Game Boy games, I think they've just been obliterated by time, but this one, 
it's okay. From a presentation standpoint, it's really what I expected in the music. I don't really mind that it's basically the same as the other games. But do I recommend it? Maybe. I mean, if you love the other Contra games, sure. If you get the Contra Anniversary Collection, sure. But I wouldn't go seek this game out. I mean, it is very similar to Super C and the original game. And if you play both of those games, you really don't need to play this. It very much is almost the same game. But I'd still rather play this game than the Castlevania Game Boy games. Anyway, let's move on. And so here we have Neo Contra, which came out for the PS2 in 2004. Now when it comes to Contra games, I really just don't hear like anything about this one is near the top of the list. Before I made this video, I really knew nothing about this game. But now I can explain to you what it is and why it's in this spot on the list. When it comes to the plot, this game does take place far in the future where Earth has actually become a prison planet home to criminals and political rebels, and it sees our man Bill Riser being sent in to deal with an upstart group known as the Neo-Contra Threat. But there is actually quite a bit more to this story. It's pretty stupid, and at times kind of laughably bad. But I mean, it's different from the other Contra games, I'll give it that. I'd rather have this than any of the Rokor shit. But you're not here for the campy, goofy-ass story. You're here to shoot the shit out of everything. So when it comes to the gameplay, this game, it does return to the three-dimensional gameplay and before you go oh god not again didn't they fuck around and find out enough in the 90s that 3d contra just doesn't work well i'll immediately preface and say that this is leagues better than what we got in the 90s sure those games were absolute shit but this gameplay is actually you know enjoyable for the most part. It's not amazing, but it's a step in the right direction compared to those games. Most of, really a majority of this game is played from an isometric perspective, but there are a few sections that are side-scrolling or from a slightly different overhead perspective, and I'll just immediately say the controls are actually decent. They're not amazing and it doesn't feel great, but they're okay. It still feels a little imprecise at times. It can feel a bit stiff, clunky, awkward, even janky, but it's passable. It's not the disaster that the PS1 games were. You can actually have some fun with the controls here and have some fun, you know, shooting things. And so if you've got that right, you've at least got one step in the right direction. You actually can't jump in this game. Instead, you can dash and spin, which are used to dodge and evade enemy attacks. And it actually works better than you would think. At first, I was really apprehensive. I was like a Contra game where you can't jump, but yeah, this is okay. Now when it comes to the weapons, this game does use a modified version of like the three weapon configuration from Shattered Soldier, the prior game where there are a few weapon sets, and one of them does include the spread shot, which is not in Shattered Soldier, and I think these are decent enough. I like how you can basically have these loadouts. There are actually some weapons from Gradius V, which is a nice crossover, and it's not the worst thing. It actually does work, even if I do prefer how older Contra games have it still, but I mean, it's decently implemented here. It's better than what Contra Force has, and you still actually get good weapons, and it's fun to use said weapons, so I mean, it's not the biggest of deals. Okay, so the shooting and controls are decent enough. The weapon selection is alright. How's the level design? The level design is alright in this game. I'm not going to act like it's amazing or some of the best from a Contra game, but it's decent enough. There's some good set pieces here and you can have some fun with it. The game is a decent challenge and you can't actually see the entire game unless you do decently well in all of the levels. So I mean, get good son. It's not impossible, but you might have to sit up and go gamer mode a few times, especially during these bosses, and I think the bosses are actually pretty decent. This game, it's actually kind of fun. Sure, it's not that long, and I wouldn't say it's all that replayable, especially compared to several other Contra games, but for being a 3D Contra game, it's fucking amazing. Compared to the other Contra games, though, yeah, it's just alright. Would I recommend it? I mean, yeah, I guess. If you've played, like, all the other Contra games and you want to try something different or you want to try a good 3D Contra game, yeah, this is one to play. The presentation's decent, the music's good, it's got a good challenge, you can have some fun with it, and it can be pretty rewarding. It's not amazing or the most fulfilling campaign, and the story's pretty damn stupid, but I won't lie to you, I did have some fun with this one. Some fun with this one. And here we have Super Contra, also known as Super C. It originally released in 98, but it came to the NES in 1990. This is the follow-up, the sequel to the original Contra. So this game actually came out less than a year after the original Contra, and with less than a year of development time, the game is naturally very similar to the previous Contra, the original game. When it comes to the setup, it's almost identical, seeing you take on some military forces and aliens, and when it comes to the gameplay, yeah, it is incredibly similar. You just run to the right and shoot everything, basically. There's a little bit of platforming, there's another level where you climb a mountain, there's some overhead sections and a ton of boss fights. There's around five or so levels, and while it isn't the longest game, there's plenty of things to kill. 
and when it comes to weapons you're going to be killing with, it's got a decent enough selection. Really, it's the same as the first games, but my precious spread gun is here, and it kicks just as much ass as before. Seriously, the spread gun is way too good in this game. But you're probably not going to hang on to it too long because this game is incredibly difficult. In terms of level design, enemy encounters, all of that, I'd say it's a little harder than the original game, but it is way harder than the original game for one key reason. In the American version, there is no Konami code. In the Japanese version, it's there, and so I very much recommend playing that version. You don't need to read Japanese to figure out how Contra works. It's a pretty difficult game, and you're really going to want the Konami code, otherwise you're going to be replaying these levels way too many times. The game is not messing around, and I had plenty of instances where I just went, oh, come on, how was I supposed to know that was going to happen? And on that note, I'll just immediately say the level design is nowhere near as memorable as the original games. Like, it's decent, it's alright, there's a few memorable moments or set pieces, and you know, there's like a boss that's pretty cool, like the final boss, but most of this game is actually kind of forgettable when it comes to the levels, in my opinion. Like, I don't know if that's like a really hot take, but none of these levels struck a chord with me. Really, none of them did, and the boss fights were just kind of there, and I was like, yeah, it was just better in the original Contra. I don't know, it hit different there. Here, it's just kind of all right. When it comes to the presentation, it's basically almost the same, except there's a ton of sprite flickering. There is a bit of slowdown here, especially in the mountain level. At least the boss theme is pretty good. I'm not going to be crazy critical on this game since it is still an NES game at the end of the day, and I did have some fun with it. If you like the original Contra, you're going to like this game, but there is a reason nowhere near as many people talk about this game like the original. It's because it's just straight up not as good. It's still a good game, and I still did have a fun time with it, but it isn't anywhere near as good as the original, in my opinion. Let's move on now. And here we have Contra Rebirth, which came out on WiiWare in 2009. Now, I very much remember when this game came out. I was kind of big into the WiiWare scene, if I do say so myself and people said that this really was one of the best games on the service and yeah looking back this game really was one of the best games on the entire WiiWare service it absolutely kicks some ass when it comes to this game setup it sees our two main characters traveling back in time to take on this neo salamander force this mysterious new group and they take them out exactly how you would expect them to. They just shoot the shit out of them. When it comes to the gameplay, it very much was a throwback to the older Contra games. They even created new and original sprites, and this was pretty novel for the time. Back in 2009, on the home consoles at least, sprite work was not all that common, not like nowadays, and there wasn't a ton of throwbacks, callbacks, whatever you want to call it. On the DS, yeah, there was plenty of sprite-based games, but again, here on the home console, on the Wii, it was novel to have sprites back, and I think they look great, and when it comes to the soundtrack, it's also pretty good but when it comes to that core gameplay it really is what you're looking for from a contra game where you move left to right you shoot absolutely everything you get some big old guns and you just blast everyone and it's a ton of fun the game is pretty difficult and really has no problem wiping the floor with you when it comes to the weapons it's a pretty decent selection the flamethrower is missing strangely enough but my spread guns here so I'm happy but I'm also really happy with this game's controls and feel. It genuinely does feel nice jumping, shooting, it all feels nice and good. The game actually does have an easy mode, and if you die, you don't lose your weapon, which, wow, that's pretty forgiving. That's all I gotta say. It's so forgiving, in fact, they don't even let you see the final boss of the true ending, so you know they're not messing around. Yeah, it's a tough game, but it's got some solid level design. There's actually some pretty decent set pieces. You can play in co-op just like the other Contra games, and if you liked any of the other Contras or you liked running gun games, I really can't imagine you not liking this. It's a good old time. Sure, it doesn't have a bunch of new innovations for Contra or move the series forward, and it doesn't have the best level design or boss fights, but it's stupid fun. And sometimes that's all you need. Something that does suck though is that this game actually is not commercially available. It was only released as a WiiWare title and the only way to play this game period now is through, shall we say, dubious methods. Konami really should re-release this game. Really all the Rebirth games, they all deserve it. But Contra Rebirth, this is a good one. You're just going to have to, shall we say, take matters into your own hands if you want to play this nowadays. And so here we have it, the one that started them all, the original Contra releasing all the way back in 1987 exclusively for the arcades, but it was only a year later that it came to the NES where it got a lot more recognition. I've always played the NES game, and it doesn't matter how many times I've come back to this game, I've always had a bit of fun with it. Is it simplistic compared to plenty of the other Contra games? Sure. But sometimes simplicity really is king, and the original Contra is an absolute classic. Seeing our two commandos, Bill and Lance, being sent to this island to destroy the enemy forces and uncovering a secret alien plot, it's their mission to just 
destroy basically everything. This was the Macho Man game. You know, nowadays, if you think about like what the manliest game is, you probably think of like Gears of War, the old Gears of War. But back then, it was Contra. And even nowadays, in my opinion, it doesn't get much more manly than Contra. This game, it just lives, breathes, and bleeds testosterone. You know you're getting in for a manly game when you play this one. And the game has always just had a certain attitude, feel, atmosphere, whatever you want to call it, a vibe that is still felt even nowadays. But when it comes to playing this game, it's pretty easy to see that a majority of Contra's DNA as a franchise really stems back to this original game. This game really established a foundation for basically what every Contra game was going to be going forward. And after looking at all of these games, to be honest, it feels like the further away they get from this original game, the worse it gets. Like Contra is one of those series that is best when it is simplistic, and this original game is simplistic. It's easy to understand. You play as a big buff macho dude just trying to shoot all the bad guys and dodge as many things coming your way as possible. There's some platforming, there's explosions, there's plenty of things trying to stop you. There's some small enemies that die in a shot, there's some big enemies that die in several shots. You actually can shoot in all eight directions, which wasn't the most common for NES games, and you'll have plenty of different weapons to shoot from, whether it's your standard gun, a machine gun where you can hold the button down, my good old spread gun, a flamethrower, a laser. You've got some tools to maim and kill. Okay, it's an NES game. You've got some tools to make them disappear. And the structure of this game is as simplistic as it gets. You move left to right pretty much much the entire time. One level you're climbing a mountain, there is a bit of platforming, and yes, if you hit the bottom of the screen you will die, but there are a few parts where the camera goes behind the player and you get to shoot forward. These are decent distractions, but the game is relatively tight with its structure. There's no overhead levels, there's no pseudo 3D nonsense here. Nope, it really is a 2D game 90% of the time, and it's a straightforward, challenging, fun experience. This game, it does use the Konami code, and you're very much going to need it because the game is difficult. It has no problem, especially in the later levels just wiping the fucking floor with you and giving you very little chance to actually beat it. So get that Konami code memorized, boy, you ain't going nowhere in this game, especially by like the third or fourth level, it starts getting real tough. But man, it is remarkable how much fun this game still is. Sure, it hasn't aged all that well in the difficulty and it's pretty punishing, but relatively speaking, I think it's aged decently and it doesn't matter really if I played this as a kid, as a young adult, as a teen, now I'm still having fun with it. It's still a good time whether I'm by myself or when I'm with a buddy. Contra is just one of those games that really is kind of timeless, easy to understand, easy to pick up and play, but it's really hard to master or get all that far without the Konami code. Contra is a certified classic for a reason with iconic visuals, decent enough music. It doesn't really slow down either. It runs pretty well. It's been on several different collections. It is one of those games that I think every gamer should try at some point, even if it's for just a few minutes. It's a legendary game for a reason. It started a legendary franchise, and it just really goes to show that sometimes more really isn't better. I'd much rather play this than Super C, like after coming back to it, I was like, yeah, no, this is way better than Super C. It's more fun. It controls better. The levels are much better. There really isn't a bad level here. It's still super hard, but it's a classic. It's a good one. And so here we have Hardcore Uprising, which came out in 2011. This game was actually developed by Arc System Works. Yes, like Guilty Gear Blaze Blue Arc System Works. And it is actually a little different from all the other Contra games. I remember my first impressions or how I first came across this game. They were giving it away on PS Plus back in the PS3 days. And I went, oh, what is this 2D shooter? I'll try it. And I was like, huh, this kind of reminds me of Contra. I loved those Contra games as a kid. And then I looked it up and went, oh shit, this is a Contra game. I didn't even recognize it and I think the biggest reason you don't recognize it is the art style. It very much is that Arc System Works art style. You know, that anime art style that Contra has never had before or really since either and I think it actually looks pretty great in this game. Everything is so full of life and animation, the environments look good. I think this is actually a pretty cool art style for the game. I hope one day Contra tries something like this again. I'm doubtful but maybe one day. So when it comes to this game's plot and setting, it's actually quite different from the other Contra games. It is a prequel to the original Contra, and it sees the world being ruled by this evil, oppressive empire known as the Commonwealth, and our story follows a few elite soldiers rising up, or you know, as the title implies, uprise, with a resistance to stop them from total dominance. The story in this game, while it is a little different from the other games, like the other games, it's pretty basic and doesn't have a large bearing on the game as a whole. It's really just the reason we get to shoot so many bad guys, and shoot bad guys you will because this is still a run and gun experience. I'll just immediately say the movement, controls, and feel of this game is quite different from what you're used to if you've played other Contra games. It definitely has a bit more weight to it. It feels a little heavier and it doesn't feel as floaty as other Contra games might. And when it comes to your moveset, it is actually quite different. 
there's more than just jumping and going prone. You can actually dash, you can even dash in the air, you can double jump, you can deflect enemy projectiles, and as you play through the game, unlock even more moves. It's actually pretty cool how you do get a decently different moveset from literally any other Contra game. I like that. It's mixing things up. It feels like it's, you know, evolving the formula. It's trying something different, and it can lead to more varied gameplay, especially if you've played a bunch of these Contra games. This one will actually feel different, and it'll actually feel nice. Shooting also feels nice. Yeah, shooting your gun feels nice. That's all you really want in a Contra game at the end of the day, but there's a decent amount of weapons to use here from your rifle, the machine gun, my good old spreader. There's the crash gun. There's like this ripple gun. There's of course, you know, the heat gun, our favorite laser, and even a katana. Like Contra 3, you can switch between two different weapons, and if you collect the same weapon over and over, it becomes more powerful, which is always going to be a neat little feature. Like, I know it doesn't seem like much, but it actually makes it incredibly rewarding when you're alive long enough that you can get the same weapon over and over and just become super powerful, and it makes the game a little easier, and you're going to need it because this game is no slouch. It is not messing around. It is also ready to kick your ass. It's not balls to the walls difficult. It's not one of the hardest games I've ever played, but it's a tough game especially on the arcade mode. It's certainly a lot more punishing in that than the story mode that it calls Rising. The game can be played in multiplayer, online, or local, which is pretty awesome. And the game actually has a decent length to it. Most Contra games, if you're not replaying the levels over and over and over, are like an hour, maybe like an hour and a half. This is a good two to three hours. There's several different characters to play as, and they're all a little different. They've even added more characters with DLC. There's some replayability here. This is a pretty good game. The shooting's nice, the movement's nice, the levels are nice as well. I wouldn't say they're like peak Contra levels and not all of the set pieces are, you know, absolutely fantastic, but I genuinely did enjoy my time with this game. I was also getting my ass whooped, but I really did enjoy my time with this one. While it isn't the most conventional Contra and it does kind of feel like they moved away from that NES game, I like that it moved the series forward in a positive direction. You know, so many of these other Contra games, they try to move the series forward and it just falls apart or it sucks. Not this one. This is actually a good one. Unfortunately, it's still only on the PS3 and 360. Like several other games in this video, it needs to be re-released and re-experienced by more people, like at least a PC release. Come on now. This is a good one that is totally worth playing if you like run and gun games. And here we have Contra 4 releasing for the DS in 2007. This game was developed by WayForward Technologies, the people that made the Shantae series. And this game, oh, it really kicks some ass. Like you really wouldn't expect the Contra game on DS to be all that good. Like maybe it's okay, but this really is one of the best Contra games of them all. This game, it's actually a blast. Now, when it comes to this game's setup, pretty simple. It does actually take place after Contra 3, and it sees a new entity known as Black Viper showing up, causing chaos and attacking the human race, and it's up to our main characters to stop them. The plot, yeah, it's about as basic as you would expect. We don't need anything more than that. We just want to get some big guns and shoot some aliens in this game. It's really good at that. Well, you get to shoot more than aliens. You'll be fighting plenty of goons in this game with tons of big guns. A bunch of the fan favorites show up here. My good old spread gun, oh, it's here. You can switch between two weapons like Contra three. If you pick up the same weapon twice, you'll actually get a powered up upgraded version of it, which is pretty awesome. And when you pick up a new weapon, the other one goes onto the ground so you can actually switch between them. You aren't just locked into what you just picked up, which is a great quality of life addition that every Contra game honestly should have after. But the additions don't stop there. You actually get a grappling hook that allows you to latch onto railings, which is pretty cool. And you're going to need to do that because this game actually uses both screens of the DS. It's one of those DS games where the action's going on on both screens, similar to, say, Sonic Rush. And I think it's pretty cool. You're going to be shot from up and down and all around, and there's just a ton of action going on in here. These levels are non-stop. Like, it is just action through and through. These are some pretty great levels, and they're easily the best levels that any portable Contra games ever had like these are actually really fun and they're well designed and the bosses are well designed too putting up a good challenge but still being a spectacle there are a couple levels that are not the typical 2d action it's where it goes behind the player and you shoot forward like the older contra games and these are decent too but it doesn't use both screens of the ds it's still cool nonetheless something else that's worth bringing up about this game being a ds game it actually does not utilize like any of the ds gimmicks outside of the menu there's no touchscreen mechanics, it doesn't use the mic, there's no bullshit, you can come back to this game even nowadays and have no problem playing it on say an emulator with a joystick, and it's just as much fun nowadays as it was then. Again, the levels kick some ass, the presentation's pretty good, the music is actually really solid. Like Contra 4 is no slouch, I don't hear a ton of people talk about this game, mostly because it was a DS game versus all the home console games, but DS or not, 
this is a good game. Like, this game really needs a re-release. I don't know exactly how they would do it since it does use both screens of the DS, but find some way to make it work because more people should play this. It is one of the better Contra games, and it feels like they actually implemented some nice quality of life features into the series that really hadn't seen any good quality of life features in quite some time. It was a great return to form, and nowadays it's still a fun time. And here we have Contra Shattered Soldier releasing for the PS2 in 2002. Now, I never heard an absolute ton about this game, especially because it was a later Contra game, and that's a real shame because over the years, this game has really become one of my favorites in the series. When it comes to the story and setup, it's a bit different from the other Contra games. Taking place well after Contra 3, it sees Bill and newcomer Lucia taking on this new terrorist organization known as Blood Falcon, and there's actually a few interesting twists and turns here. The story, yeah, it is kind of stupid and cheesy, but it's not the worst thing. At the very least, I can appreciate that they tried something different. When it comes to the gameplay though, they did the opposite of trying something different. They dropped all that 3D nonsense and really just kind of went back to basics. The entire game is played from a 2D perspective. There are 3D models here, but the entire game is on a 2D plane. And that's totally fine with me because this is some refined 2D gameplay. When it comes to the movement and the feel and the controls, it is quite good here. It does feel a little heavier than, say, the Super Nintendo game, but I think the game actually controls pretty well. And there are plenty of instances where you get on, like, a vehicle, like the good old days of the older Contra games, and these also feel great. I think the biggest change to this game from really all the other Contra games has got to be, like, the straight-up omission of power-ups. Instead, you have a loadout. You have three permanent weapons that you can switch at any time. Each weapon has, like, a standard shot and then an alternate charged shot. The rifle is gone, you just have the machine gun where you hold the button down and it feels great. The machine gun actually feels really good in this game. You also get a flamethrower and a grenade launcher, but then there's also charged versions. And these are all different where you can shoot out like this gun pod or like a big energy shot or even homing missiles. And so you kind of have like six weapons across three weapons or shall I say three guns. And at first I didn't really know how to feel about this. One, I was like, where's my spread gun? Why is the spread shot gone? And I still think that's pretty lame. The spreader should be here. It sucks that it's not here, but... The more I played of this game, the more I warmed up to this, and I actually think this is fine. It's different. It makes you change up your playstyle. I like that there is the charge shot as well. It adds a little bit more depth and strategy as to which weapon you want to use for the battle, and it can even help balance out the difficulty. I mean, in the older Contra games, if you really suck and you keep dying, you're going to be stuck with a shitty rifle or at the most the machine gun. Here, you really can have access to all the weapons at once. But don't think thanks to all these weapons that the game is a cakewalk or anything even close to that. This game is not messing around. Around. This is one of the hardest games in the series. This is one of the hardest PS2 games, period. Like, it is not fucking around. It will destroy you. There is an easy mode where you get like 30 lives, but playing on this difficulty, you can't even see like the last third of the game. And so you're going to need to play on normal where, yeah, it's pretty difficult. The other new addition this game has is the hit rate. You probably noticed it at the top of the screen. And this system really gauges the number of enemies or pieces of scenery you destroy as you play through each level. It's like a performance metric. And this, along with how many lives you lost or continues used, actually does determine your ending. There's a few different endings in this game, and this feature I'm a little bit more mixed on. It seems like a cool idea, like yeah, the more shit you blow up and the more people you kill, the number goes up, but it just doesn't seem all that well implemented. And then on top of that, the whole like, oh, you lose lives and continues, it's gonna hurt your overall performance, man, that just seems even a little too punishing, in my opinion. Like, the game's already hard enough. I don't need it kicking me in the balls that I had to redo this level like five times. My punishment was playing through the level five times. But despite that, I actually really did like the gameplay of this game. The game feels nice, and then the levels are actually pretty good. There's a ton of awesome set pieces. There's some really great bosses here. The game is violent, it is gory, it is difficult, it is challenging, but it is rewarding. Like, it's actually incredibly rewarding, and one of the reasons it feels so rewarding is the music. I'm not even kidding. The music is so good in this game. Like, I could just take a step back and say that the music in this game is just fantastic. It is easily the best soundtrack of any Contra game. It was mostly done by Akira Yamaoka, the Silent Hill composer, and it shows, man. It is so good. I've been listening to this soundtrack for, like, a decade. Like, even this game's most hardcore haters can agree that the music absolutely slaps in this game. It's really really underrated. It's just really good music. The presentation as a whole, I mean, it's all right. The game doesn't look amazing, but it's decent for what it was. The frame rate was fine, so that's all well and good. But ooh, that soundtrack, man, I could be here all day talking about how good that soundtrack is. Overall, Contra Shattered Soldier, I think, is actually a pretty underrated game. 
I don't see it get talked about all that much, even in Contra circles. And when it does, usually people are just like, eh, it's all right. But I think it's more than all right. It's got great levels. It's fun. It's addicting at times. And it just has this really awesome energy or vibe or personality that I feel like a lot of the other Contra games don't have. And yeah, I really like Shattered Soldier. This is a good one that I absolutely worth recommend playing. It really needs to be re-released. We need another like Contra collection with this and 4 and Rebirth. A bunch of the later ones because they're all worth playing. But this one, ooh, this is a good one. And so here we have the latest Contra, Contra Operation Galuga, releasing here in 2024. I want to give another shout out to Konami for hooking me up with a review code. I very much do appreciate it. Now, before this game came out, I really didn't know what to make of it. I was like, it could be okay. It could also be total crap. It was developed by WayForward, who made Contra 4, and that game was pretty awesome. So maybe this will be all right. And after playing through it, yeah, this game is actually good. It's one of the better Contras. It's probably the best Contra in the last decade or two. And it's good to see that there's at least one good modern Contra game. So what even is this game? So this game is actually a reimagining of the original Contra. It's not a remake. It's not a one-for-one -one recreation. It really is, for the most part, its own beast entirely. There's just a few similar beats here and there. Like the story, despite there being more characters, cutscenes, and a hell of a lot more dialogue than the NES game, is still about our two main commandos being dropped onto an island, basically being told to destroy everything. There is a bit more to it than that, like how there is a bit more to the Wendy's menu outside of spicy nuggets, but I just don't really care. I just want my spicy nuggets, damn it. And here, I just want to shoot some shit and I want it to be good. And good it is. I will immediately say the movement, the controls, and the feel of this game are great. Maybe the best of any Contra game. It absolutely feels modern. It just has a really nice feel to it. It's tight. It's responsive. And yeah, it really does just feel nice. Shooting feels nice. And when it comes to this game's structure, it is what you want from a Contra game. It's not 3D. There's not a bunch of gimmick levels. It really is left to right. Basically, the entire game. It's a side scroller where you shoot everything that moves, you do some platforming, you do some climbing here and there, and towards the end of every stage you get to fight a big ass boss and yeah, it's just fun. It's big dumb fun and the game absolutely has the energy and the personality that you'd want from a Contra game that it feels like the series has been missing for a long time. They really brought back that like 80s commando energy and I'm all for it. But to rewind time for a second, the shooting. It is nice. Let's talk about the weapons. This game has all the staples when it comes to Contra weapons. The machine gun, my good old spreader and it's fucking awesome in this game. Laser, flamethrower, homing missile. It's like charger. They're all great. All of the Weapons are actually useful, they have their own unique purpose and uses, like there's no bad weapon here, they legit are good. You can carry two weapons and switch between them, and when you collect more of the same weapon you'll actually power it up, and some of these powered up weapons are like stupid good, like they are really good. One of them shoots a black hole, and the black hole is like maybe the best weapon in the game. The weapons are actually good. And yeah, the enemies just get absolutely shredded in this game, it's pretty satisfying how they just get completely torn up. And the game puts you in several different scenarios where you just really destroy everything on screen. The level design is actually pretty good in this game. Almost all of the levels are very good. One or two of them get a little annoying and overstay their welcome, I won't lie to you. But for the most part, this really is some of the best levels of any Contra game. Yeah, it feels like they were a little inspired by the original game, but they just go so balls to the walls, especially towards the end of the game, that you wouldn't even really know it's connected to the original Contra. And the same goes for the bosses, which I think are all pretty good, and the game does put up a good challenge. It isn't like crazy difficult, it's not one of the hardest Contra games of them all, and you can actually make the game decently easy, but you can also make it about as hardcore as the originals, which in my opinion is the way to go about it. Let the people who just want to play through this game kind of casually go through it, but if you want it stupid hard, you can also have it. I think it's the best of both worlds. And I was able to beat it without save state, so it must not be that hard, right? Okay, I did play the game in co-op and I might have been carried. The game does have local co-op. For some weird reason, it doesn't have online co-op. I mean, I get it's a throwback, but no online co-op just seems really easy. Not everyone's in the position I am where I can just sit down with my buddy and play through this. Really odd design decision. When it comes to this game's length, it's around an hour and a half maybe two hours at most which is a pretty in line with the other contra games but it does have this nifty little challenge mode that i think is cool it adds a little bit more replayability there's actually a bunch of different characters you can play as and all of the characters have different abilities and skills so there is some replayability 
here. Despite that though, they are asking for $40 full price, which I think is a bit much considering the content you get. I mean, even if you replay this game a few times, do all the challenges, I doubt you'll spend more than four or five hours with this game. But hey, at least it's an enjoyable four or five hours. The presentation, it's clearly budget and I think it's fine. The art style is fine. The music is decent enough as well. There are some fun nods and throwbacks to the older Contra games, but yeah, this definitely is one of those wait for a sale games. Konami games go really cheap, really fast. So you'll be able to find this one real cheap before the end of the year, I'm sure. But once it's cheaper, I absolutely recommend playing this one, especially if you love running gun games like this is a fun throwback. It feels like Contra is actually good again while you're playing this, and it was an enjoyable couple hours. Sure, it's not the most rewarding or challenging or in-depth experience you'll play in 2024, but it's a fun little throwback to simpler times. And while it doesn't push the genre forward, it's good at what it does, and sometimes we need just big, dumb, fun games, and this is one of those times. And here we have Contra Hard Corps, releasing for the Genesis originally in 94, but has since been re-released a few times. Now, Hard Corps is like if Konami went, how do we make Contra 3 even crazier, even wilder, even harder? Like, they just went absolutely balls to the wall, and Hardcore really is like the craziest game in the entire series. It did spawn its own little sub-series, and I talked about those a bit earlier, and none of those games are really any good outside of Uprising. But there's a reason they tried to make a little series out of this game because this game it just goes nuts when it comes to the plot it sees, you know, the usual elite team of commandos known as Contra Hardcore trying to basically protect humanity. And there'd be a few original characters that would show up here. Our staple character Bill is not here, but that's okay. I actually think the new cast of characters are decent enough. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, it feels like they took Contra 3's gameplay and injected some steroids or some crack or some shrooms, something crazy to make it even crazier. There are a few differences between this and Contra 3, though. You're still running left to right shooting literally everything until you get to the boss and then you shoot that too. There's no gimmick levels here, they're not mixing it up, the entire game is in 2D and it's awesome. You do have a new move at your disposal, you can slide now and you're actually invincible when you do it and you can even damage enemies. The slide, it's a good addition. And when it comes to the movement and feel and just general control of your character, I think it's very good, it is just as good as Contra 3 which was excellent by the way. But something different now is you actually get to carry up to four different weapons. Yeah, you get to have A, B, C, and D, and you get to use bombs as well. And the weapon roster in this game, yeah, it is pretty good. There's a bunch of good weapons here, and they're all incredibly satisfying to use. But don't for a fucking second think this game is any easier because you have four weapons in a slide where you become like a little invincible. No, this game is hard as fuck. Like, holy shit, this game is hard. You know, this game is really fun, it's rewarding, but man, it's fucking hard. This is one of the hardest games I've ever played. This is like the hardest Genesis game I've ever played. Something cool about this game is that there's actually branching pathways allowing you to play through different sets of stages depending on, you know, like the choice you make. But the thing is, you'd have to replay the game to do that. I don't want to replay this game. It is so brutally difficult that I just, when I was done with it, I was like, no, I'm done. I am not playing this game. It is stupid hard. And so it's pretty cool that they really do incentivize replayability, you know, with the different characters, the different pathways. But again, you'd have to replay this game. And it was just so difficult that I just have no desire to replay it. It's actually got a good length to it, too. I feel like it's longer than the average Contra game. And I can very easily see why so many people say it's their favorite Contra game. It's one of the very best. It absolutely is. It's got some of the craziest, best levels of any Contra game. Like, literally right from the start, the game just dials it up to 100, and it really never lets Let's go of the gas. It's just crazy throughout the entire game. It's got a certain energy to it that very few other Contra games have. The game has an excellent presentation. It doesn't really slow down. I think the addition of the slide and some of the crazy bosses in this game really enhance the gameplay. Like, it's a good experience. It's one of the best running guns you could play. But man, call it a skill issue. I know the game is literally called Hardcore, and I know the Contra games are all difficult, but this game is too difficult for me to say it's the best Contra game. Like, I think the difficulty is just a little too high in this one. I absolutely recommend it though. If you've played a few of the other Contra games, even just like one, just don't start with this one. Be very aware of what you're getting into. I didn't play this one as a kid. I didn't get into this one until I was way older because I heard it was so hard. And yeah, they weren't kidding. It's very difficult, but it still is a very good game. It absolutely is one of the best Contra games and it totally is worth playing if you like the genre, but that difficulty, oh man. 
And here we have it, finally the number one spot, we have Contra 3 The Alien Wars, releasing for the Super Nintendo in 1992. This game absolutely is the fan favorite in the series. I have a feeling if you ask really any average Contra fan, you know, the five of us that still exist, what their favorite Contra game is, they're probably going to say Contra 3. This game feels like it understood the vibe and what people liked about the original Contra and brought it to the 16-bit era. Not only did they do that, but they really created one of the finest running gun games you could ever play. The game's premise is pretty simple. As the title implies, the aliens show up and we go to war with them, and that's really it. When it comes to the gameplay, it is the Contra gameplay you know and love, and it is at its best. Hydrated by testosterone, you blow just absolutely everything up in this game. There are six stages, four of them are that traditional 2D experience, while two of them are overhead, and yeah, you're just given a bunch of powerful weapons, and you've got to destroy even more powerful enemies. The controls and movement and feel in this game is really just peak Contra. It just feels basically perfect. You have complete control over your character, it's incredibly tight, responsive and it just feels nice blowing shit up is fun and it really is the standard for running gun games that or several other metal slug games but what i'm trying to say is the movement controls all that is very good you don't ever have to worry about that when it comes to the weapons you can hold two and you can switch between them whenever you want this is a pretty awesome addition i really do like this when it comes to the weapons that are available in this game it's maybe the best roster of them all that or operation galuga all the fan favorites and staples of the series are here they're all good they're all useful they're all practical legit all of them are good at some point in the game a spread gun shows up it's as awesome as ever there are power-ups to help you along the way that make blowing shit up even easier you also get bombs which is basically a screen nuke and when you die you get more screen nukes like the bombs are actually really good in contra do not discount the bombs but all these weapons wouldn't mean shit if you didn't have good enemies to destroy this game it is really just aliens the entire time you fight a bunch of crazy looking aliens in this game and some of them don't go down without a fight like some of them really take a lot of punishment and speaking of the game's difficulty it's a hard game it's one of the hardest contra games but i don't think it's stupidly difficult it's a bit more fair than hardcore and i think it reaches a better balance when it comes to the difficulty i still had plenty of moments where i wanted to rip my hair out and i was like wow this game is really really difficult and some of the overhead stages are just absolutely ridiculous like especially the boss where you're just spinning around what the fuck was that what were they thinking with this but aside from that i think the difficulty yeah it's doable. It's not just unbelievably hard. But seriously, what the fuck is up with this spinning? When it comes to the overhead stages, as a kid, or as a teenager, I really hated these actually, but as I've gotten older, I've come to appreciate them a bit more. These are really the only good top-down stages in really any Contra game. It's shown up in plenty of other Contra games, but I feel like they got them right here, and then they just never got them right again. Like, in other Contra games, at most, they're tolerable. Here, it's more than tolerable. It's actually fun, you know? They're actually an enjoyable experience for the most part. And speaking of enjoyable experience, the reason I have Contra 3 so high, really, is because the level design is the best of the whole series the level design is peak it is not as balls to the wall crazy as hardcore but i actually think it is overall stronger level design they really made it feel like a crazy action movie and the game just has a really good vibe and energy to it with in my opinion really tight level design some of the best level design you'll find in any running gun game i didn't think it was overly cheap and i actually thought that the level design was very well made for the most part it stands the test of time the game has actually aged very well the presentation is good the game runs really well especially when there's a ton of shit going on it uses the fancy mode 7 graphics which i think is really cool and the soundtrack is good as well this game it really is the real deal when it comes to contra games if you could only play one contra game Contra 3 really is the one to play. It is still difficult and there is no Konami code, so be aware that, yeah, it is difficult if this is the first Contra game you play, but I very much think it's a rewarding, challenging experience that will make you grow a few chest hairs. I certainly did, and I went, wait, what the fuck? What kind of 12 year old is this many chest hairs? You know, I'm getting off topic. Let's wrap this up. Contra 3 is an awesome game. Contra is a very up and down series. When it's good, it can even get pretty good, and when it's bad, oh, it's absolutely awful. Some of these games really are some of the worst games. Like like ever made but this series has just been through the ringer it is crazy that it is still alive and as strong as it is today like 
that just shows that Konami ain't given up on it, which can either be good or bad depending on your perspective, but also that, yeah, I guess the series just has so much history and so much legacy that it deserves to be around still. I don't know if there's much of a market for Contra games, honestly, in today's climate, but I'm glad that it's still around and I hope there's more in the future. You know, good Contra games and not like some pachinko machine or something. If they're more like Operation Galuga, then I welcome them. If not, yeah, I'm going to be a lot more hesitant because outside of Uprising, like every time they've tried to try something different with Contra, it really didn't work out and it was near the bottom of this list. But there you have it. We've talked about every Contra. There's no more to talk about. I don't want to talk about Contra ever again. This video is almost an hour long. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to this part of the video, I need you to comment Hamtaro, as in that old anime series, those old games. That's our secret code word that you made to the end of the video. You'll get a heart from me. I very much appreciate it. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Seriously, if you could take a moment to do any of those things, I really would appreciate it because it took me hella long to make this video. And I know Contra is pretty niche, honestly, especially compared to some of the other series I look at. And I'm just hopeful that even five people make it to the end here. Hope you all have a safe night. Thank you so much. I'm gonna go have some Wendy's spicy nuggets. Bye bye now.